Welcome to TRS Clips, India's fastest learning portal. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell icon. One thing I found very fascinating about your studies from the first uh, chat that we did was the different aspects that you all put through. Say the different subjects in that four year course that you went through. Yes. So can you take us through the subjects and maybe even the breakdown of those subjects? Because that's just, it was eye opening for me. You know, most amateurs and most people who don't know much about the Shaolin Temple will assume that it's probably just a place you learn martial arts at. And, uh, you know, maybe you learn a little bit of lifestyle, but there's so much more. There's medicine, there's healing, there is lifestyle, obviously. And then there's martial arts. Correct. Um, our routine was pretty strict. Before I became a warrior monk, um, our routine was anyway strict as a foreign student. Anybody can go there as a foreign student. There's a certain fee that you pay and you get to, to pay monthly. I know you can get a package. Uh, many people go, people can afford, people cannot afford. But uh, for foreign students, definitely that wasn't as strict as how warrior monks have to be because they are, uh, they have to abide and adhere to the principles and the and the vows and the oaths that they take, right? Because it's most serious. Because that's a that's their home, that's their base, that's where they function from. That's you know where they they work from. For foreign students, it's a temporary um, like a camp, uh, like okay, two month camp, one month camp, three month, six month, one year, you know, commitment study. Like for me. It's like I did my MBA. For f I was there for four years and eight months precisely. So for me, the takeaway uh, out of the structural lifestyle that we had, the routine lifestyle that we had, the discipline lifestyle, uh, we had Zen Buddhist philosophy classes, which was in Mandarin. First, let me just tell you that everything that I studied was in Mandarin. I speak <sighs> fluent Mandarin. After one and a half year, I got adopted as a warrior monk. I was, um, my savings got over the one which I was going to put in tomorrow land, <laughs> which I put in my training and my healing in the temple. And... Um, I got adopted by them. Uh, they saw me as an asset that, you know, I can help the temple for translation. I can travel for shows. My Kung Fu was a little better and I was always training more. You know, they used to say that I'm training more than the monks, uh, my senior monk brothers. And you know, I was like, it was always an honor for me to feel that, you know, like okay, I'm training like them. I'm training at least close to them that many hours. But obviously they are on a very higher level. But I still strive because I had no martial art background as such. Athletic background, yes, always good stamina, good speed, agility, great. But, you know, the, the the foundation of martial arts, if your foundation is not strong in any art, you know, you don't, you don't, you can't progress ahead. What, what is the foundation of martial arts? Um, firstly, everything starts with your breath. We spoke about this previously as well. So your breath needs to be right. So in my first meditation class, um, I got hit by my master because I was not breathing right. And that was the biggest lesson that happened to me that you need to learn how to breathe right. Because Kung Fu, the martial, the Shaolin culture just involves the breathing aspect of it, whether it's hard Kung Fu, whether it's soft Kung Fu, there are 72 types, 36 hard, 36 soft. So 36 hard has hard kind of breathing, you know, like how you have to hold, how you have to attack and hard, soft one has very slow, soft movements and then suddenly there's an explosivity that comes out. So everything is a, is, is a cultivation and nurturing of your breath. So how much are you practicing by combining your body, your movements with your breath mm. is what Kung Fu is. And that's how you actually break, you know, bricks. Yes, that's how which you are lined that's up on That's qigong, yeah. So you, that's called hard qigong that we break things. Whether it's we, it's it's actually a stone, not a brick. So we mm. break stones. We break metal flat rods on our head. We break like sticks on our back and our legs and everything. So yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of things that happen. Yeah. And uh, you're saying that all these things that people see on the outside are actually basically they boil down to your breathing. They boil down your breathing patterns. Exactly, because your pran, you know, your breath, uh, your chi is right behind where your navel is. Just right under that is where the storehouse of your chi is. In Chinese, we call it dantian. Is it related to chakras? Uh, it's, that's a different study, but they are uh, very parallel. Okay. They're very wow. parallel, but it's a different study. This is completely breath work. Through cultivation of breath, we can uh, cure and heal and uh, unblock a lot of our chakras. Yeah, I think this is what a lot of people fail to understand that uh, your breath is actually your body's link to your soul. Yeah. And your soul contains... It's a nice way to put it. <laughs> yeah, your soul contains unlimited power. And when you're able to harness the power of breath breathing techniques, not only does it give you power, like in your case where you'll use chi to actually become stronger or yeah. do stronger acts in the world but it also makes you mentally stronger it also makes you stronger for life but you really need to experience pranayama and breath work in the long term to see long changes term. within you that's true see how calm you become see how centered you become see where your focus uh, levels go to correct but uh, was that was that your early uh, kind of learning that okay i'm learning how to control my breath now and i'm seeing my knee heal i'm seeing changes in my mind 
Correct. So, um, definitely initially in the in the beginning, I didn't know how to do healing. So, mm. the master in the first meditation class told us that just learn how to breathe normally as possible, and focus on your on your on your part where you need to heal and supply fresh oxygen to it. And that's the first process of healing. What What is the? Can you teach a brief basic breathing technique here? Um, yeah, sure, definitely. So what we do is uh, we sit in a lotus position, a half lotus, full lotus. Up Which to is you. your left palm on top of your right palm. It's called um, It's called the zazen posture, where your left thumb is touching your right thumb. You put it right under your navel. That's mm. where your tantian is. So when you're breathing, you're expanding. You're breathing in. You're expanding your stomach. And when you're exhaling, you're contracting. You're pulling in your stomach. Mm. That's the way you normally breathe. You tongue should be rolled up on your top palate your mm. teeth uh, upper jaw like the whole jaw to be together and inhale exhale is from your nose the most basic way of breathing is just to inhale from your nose and exhale the relaxation the first step is relaxation to being aware of your breath work this is the first step then there are different types of breathing there's fast paced breathing there is soft paced breathing there's breath work with body movements that's completely a holistic uh, training we call qigong activity where there is uh, different kinds there is a soft one there is a cotton fist which is there which is that a soft fit, soft fist which is there so there are different techniques which are there but the first one you should just know of being aware of your breath how relaxed it can be and those different types of breathing uh, do they give you different benefits is it for a definitely, different definitely definitely those different types of breathing techniques are started by bodhidharma uh, it comes from uh, two practices in Chinese. We call it the Yi Jin Jing and Shi Sui Jing. Yi Jin Jing is the muscle uh, tendon classic change method. And the Shi Sui Jing is the bone marrow cleansing method. Wow. Yes. So there are different. These two have uh, immense amount of effects on your on your body. Um, eliminating diseases, increasing lung capacity, f supplying fresh oxygen to your body, improving visceral functions of your body. So there are a lot of things that we do even in uh, China when this COVID broke down. Uh, all our Shaolin masters, all our Shifus and our, our senior, senior brothers and brothers, they were teaching Qigong to a lot of doctors and patients online. So even like, you know, I helped a lot of people whoever were interested in learning Qigong online. So H have you made videos about this? Or like I you... still haven't because I've just started my school. And I'm still trying to, you know, push things out there. And I would love for people to experience it while coming there rather than just digitally yeah. accepting. I know a lot of people cannot access, you know, have access to come to the school. But I'm planning to make uh, like a uh, we, like a po like a podcast series mm. of like video series where, you know, like a lot of breath work is there. Like a masterclass series, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm planning yeah. to shoot that. <laughs> People need to rediscover ancient wisdom. That's how I look at it. Like, I just also want to brief the listeners of the English episode that you spoke about your journey with your knee in the old episode, how you tried different kinds of physiotherapy, you tried different kinds of uh, recovery based uh, techniques. And finally, it was all this. It was the breath work and the martial arts had actually healed your knee completely. Correct. So, um, you know, I, I want to ask you, I mean, have you seen Batman Begins? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you ever have those kind of moments while you were training uh, where you realized, okay, now I'm becoming some kind of a machine because that's effectively what you have become with all your knowledge of martial arts, your knowledge of your own mind, your knowledge of philosophy. You're not the boy you were when you went. And there must have been that one moment where you actually killed off the boy inside you and became a man. Do you remember any one moment like that or was it over time? <laughs> uh, I definitely remember the film Batman. Um, I never related myself to any of those, um, you know, scenes that I've seen or anything. But one thing I th thoroughly remember uh, watching a lot of Bruce Lee films and Kung Fu films that I've seen before, you know, just for fun. Never thought of it, like, oh, I want to do this, it's going to be so cool. Uh, I've definitely looked up to Bruce Lee, who hasn't, Jackie Chan, Jet Li. And I aspire to be like the, the Indian, uh, you know, action person actor figure whatever i don't know whatever is you know out there for me you know i have it, i have my school or whatever action person you know just needs to be uh, of you know of a country of you know globally wherever i am going to be mainly in india only uh, i did get uh, flashes of uh, the time when 36 chamber of shaolin process was going on and also when Jackie Chan had done a um, couple of films, you know, with his master, drunken master, he's done, you know, how he was not serious and then how he got serious, how he had things available in his, you know, comfort zone. And then, you know, how things are suddenly out of his comfort zone. And then the only option and the only way is to just strive and just work hard. You know, I didn't, I could relate to certain things. Uh, but yeah, discipline came very easy to me. 
I think the only toughest part that happened to me was the language. Uh, but I knew that if this is something that I want in the long term, I need to do it. So there was no uh, procrastinating. There was no worriness. There was no frustration at all. I just went with the flow. Uh, you know, just like Buddha says that uh, don't dwell in the past. Don't think about the future. Be in the present. And I literally just did that. I was completely in the present moment. And I just worked day, uh, day by day, step by step. I worked hard. And I just focused on the things that I really wanted to do. You know, I was challenged by that. I will not get a split. And then I got a split. You know, I got my splits done and everything. So things, you know, like just happen in a way where um, that that place, the temple is filled with so much of uh, knowledge and wisdom. Through, Everywhere. Through books? No, just in general in presence. Mm. So much of presence. And like I said, you know, knowing Mandarin is like a big asset, big bonus, you know, for you. Otherwise, translators don't do that, a great, that of a great job. Uh, but living there, you know, got made me learn the local dialect, which is out there, uh, made me understand certain terms which are not there in the books, you know, that are not, it's not there in the thesaurus or the dictionary. So certain things were self, the language was self-taught, but certain other things regarding the lifestyle aspect, when I completely surrendered myself, when they accepted me, that's where I learned the maximum as well. Mm. Um, you know, they say information is present all around us and it's <laughs> there for you to catch. Wisdom Correct. is there for you to catch. Which is why, you know, we had a theoretical physicist on the show recently who studies like the stars, who studies wow. black holes. And he said that in theoretical physics, it's a lot about uh, creativity. And a lot of your ideas for the possible theorems that you want to prove actually come in your dreams. Or it, it happens to you when you're in a very relaxed place. Maybe you're having a shower and you'll realize something. Hmm. That's another example of you putting your consciousness on one subject and then the universe saying, oh, okay, you want to put your consciousness here? Here, take this piece of information. Mm. So maybe that's what you felt as well in the temple. I completely did. I, I so agree with you. Yeah, that exactly happened. I put my consciousness consciousness, and I think the, the fruit of it was just uh, progress. Uh, the fruit of it was, um, you know, you get paid for what you work for, mm. you know, not, not monetary wise, but wisdom, wisdom wise and knowledge is knowing, but wisdom is applying. So I got the knowledge and I applied it. So that's where I, I progressed, you mm. know. Uh, so there wasn't one particular day that you changed. There wasn't one incident, but you took one day at a time and over time you just became a new person by incremental upward steps. Just day by day, purely day by day. There mm. was, there was nothing. Um, the transition was definitely noticed by me, my, my family, whenever they, you know, when I, when they visited me once, when I went back to renew my visa. Um, and then uh, I think the main thing uh, as a Shaolin monk, what I really got to learn, you know, as an out, as a foreigner, um, as a non-Chinese person, um, listening was a great thing to know, um, but to adapt, to adapt to people, adapt to situations, adapt to um, not having any kind of inhibitions against any culture, uh, being open to learning these things. And I think that's where I, like I said, I surrendered to the culture. I became one of them. They accepted me because I chose to study the language. I chose to study everything that's there in the temple in that language. Mm. And that's what they found, I think, ad you know, admirable or commendable. And that's where they adopted me and made me a warrior monk. So uh, there's a short documentary that's made. Uh, I shared with you the link. So yeah. Indian in the Shaolin temple. Yeah. So they saw you practicing. They saw you healing. They yes. saw you being enthusiastic yes. about the subjects. And they said, that, okay, you should become a warrior monk. That's true. 